I'm, I'm hearing particular words keep coming up over and over, you know, worried, protective, um, toxic, possessive, you know, we spoke about love, um, the correlation between jealousy and love, all these things. So um, it then brings me to a situation that Caroline and I were in, where we were coming up with the questions for this, this segment. And we, we came to a kind of a roadblock where we needed um, feedback from males and females, right? And after this survey, we found out that women, right? What was the, the sample women size? That's Listen, what the sample suffered? size <laughs> was a good sample size for a qualitative study. Um, we all know that qualitative studies don't require a huge number. We just need to reach a point of saturation clear, and we got to that point of saturation. To get, continue, Amanda. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. So the women, they expressed that men deal with jealousy in the form of control. Now, hold on. Don't unmute your mic yet. Wait just now. Let it soak in a little bit. Because the men, they then said about the woman that they deal with jealousy by being nagging and throwing temper tantrums. So firstly, I'm <laughs> directing the question to the men, right? So because I, ad I address what the woman said first, right? So the men, do you all believe or do you all agree that you all deal with jealousy by being controlling or do you all deal with it another way? Let me hear your perspective. I am thinking when the woman said controlling, they're talking about the negative aspect of jealousy. Yeah. And, and if we talk about the um, psychology between men and women, we will both act um, in different ways when we're dealing with it. And because men are more aggressors or hunters, or we are more... We are more testosterone behind us. Um, it may be assertiveness if we're talking about in the positive sense. So when you reach the place of controlling, controlling to me goes when um, I think as Carlin talks about it being on the different other side, toxic side. Um, but as Cleon said, don't text me back. I want make him a little jealous. You assert yourself so that she knows. Listen. I am zoned in, laser focus on you, and I am interested in you. You understand? Okay. So I believe it's a difference. So when they say controlling, I'm thinking in their mind, they're looking at it in terms of a negative sense. Okay. A man without God is a beast, and his intentions naturally would not be that of a positive one. And because we are born and shaped in iniquity, I'm not giving an excuse here, but naturally, you know, being. The more forward, the more, you know, going at what you want or what you need or what you deserve, you see something else going awry and leaving you, you being that man, you being that um, aggressor and a man that is without, you know, divine intervention in his life, you would be a bit aggressive in your approach naturally towards a situation that's going getting out of hand. Right, even if it's not physically aggressive, it may be um, emotionally aggressive, right? It may also be um, socially aggressive, right? So because you are jealous now, it may come across as anger. Sometimes it may, it may not be anger, but it may come across as hurt. And because we are not always, and this is, also, as with society and many families and homes. So, one, there's a lack of divine intervention with God in our lives. Two, there's a lack of proper social interaction and thought, thought for young men. So, when we get older now, we don't have a total grip on our emotions. And before, you know, growing into that stage in our lives where we, we, we learn to deal with it, sometimes it doesn't come off properly and it comes off more as aggression than of love. Sometimes it's just because we are hurting, right? It's because we are, you know, for lack of 
is the sense of our word. We are, we don't know how to control our emotions, right? But that means it comes across negatively and forcefully. And as I started at saying, a man of God is a beast. Take that out of the picture, as well as you know, an improper social upbringing, it's double the trouble. That is not for all men. There are lots of men out there who, even if they didn't have Christian upbringing, they were brought up right in a social hemisphere and they were, they were taught how to deal with their emotions and hence they were able now to relate and communicate to their significant other how they feel properly and in a peaceful manner. But in many cases, because of that, we, we tend to, and this is not for everyone, we focus on young ladies, we treat them, you know, we nurture them and this is how to do this, this is how to do that. Young man, go outside there and play. Kick that ball. Don't cry. And these sort of things. So when it comes now to you being rejected by your significant other, you being told no for the first time in your life, you getting that pain that what we call locally to bank up, you know, that heartbreak. And you haven't even broken up yet, but because the person isn't giving you that amount of attention and you don't have those proper facilities that brought you up in the way you should have been, you are now expressing yourself the only way you know how, and that is as a yes. You can thank you. Thank you very much, Caleb. Okay. Um, yeah, well, he basically said everything, right? I just mentioned. Um, I can have the word in, please, Amanda, that men are what? Men are what? Just, just say the... They deal with jealousy uh -huh. in uh -huh. the form of control. Okay, control. All right. Okay, nice. So, all right. So, basically, I mean, the two of them touched on it totally, right? So, I just have, like, a minute. I'll just say this. Um, I believe it reaches to that point when... 90% of the times, you know, when, when, when it reaches that point, um, for men, I believe it has a lot to do with the men themselves not thinking they are, they are worthy. And listen to me when I, all right. So a man who is doing dirt or who would have done dirt or probably would have met the person doing dirt um just to be clear by this you mean that they are cheating or they are um, they yeah. Awesome. They are yeah okay so yes yeah, so i just i wanted the people out there to have an understanding of what you meant by doing this all right cool i apologize all right um sorry i apologize for that yes so someone who would have been dabbling in you know that that lifestyle right so it, i mean it may be in the past, right? But if they are holding on to it, I believe that reaches to that point when they themselves know that A, if she think I am being loyal and I am not, then she could not be and I think she is. And I believe that for men, that we can't take it. Now it is, universe, it is universally known that men just can't handle heartbreak, right? So as Caleb would have mentioned, most times we're not mature to really um understand our feelings and know how to deal with it right so we usually deal with it in all sorts of ways right so because of that right because of that and because of of just how we were built we cannot handle that kind of heartbreak and in order to kind of safeguard ourselves usually we jump the gun and we may force situations where we may just want to put a hand on it before it even reaches that stage because we know if it reaches that stage we don't know how to handle it, All right? So I believe that's where it may come across as the whole control aspect because we know we had brethren who was real strong and when they get a heartbreak, they start to cry and they start to do this. So I don't want to end up like that. You understand? As a man, I don't want to be laughing stuck. When when when, it, when these things happen to women, they could go to the friend and they, and they have a whole night where they talk and they may cry and they may watch whatever. But for men, is is. Is, is Pong, right? And for the international audience, is peak well, no, Pekong is also where they might know. But basically, they are lambasing you, right? That's I'm another word, word. yes, yes. All right, That's okay. another training right? word, yeah. <laughs> so basically, they are making fun of you, right? They will continuously make fun of you. This could happen 10 years ago. It will come up again in a situation. Hey, everybody, I get you to do with our bad boy. <laughs> and you know, it's always in a form of belittling. So 
in order for us not to feel anything close to that, most times try to control as much as we can because I don't want to feel that at all. Okay. All right. Dominic, you had something to say? Yeah, because I wanted also to bring it relevant to our time with social media, people posting pics for the gram, for Instagram. Sometimes we are only fans pages going out here now, all these <laughs> sort of things. And um, you have been my cause. It was a discussion happening where um, some females would look at their boyfriend or even spouse telling them, hey, in that picture, it's attracting a little too much attention. And because we're in a society where, hey, basically anything you say now is the mass controlling. So I'm wondering where this poll come from because even some of those things could be seen as controlling. Um, because you have persons who are in relationships and they're posting stuff for the gram. So, and you're, you're seeing all the comments. So if your boyfriend or someone say, hey, that looking a little too, you put that up now and you will hear the world say, hey, he's trying to control it, he's trying to manage it. So that's another aspect of it as well, where sometimes persons come into relationships, they still want to act single. And then when you raise something, um, that's now is seen as controlling. So I just want to throw that little um, source in there. So let me let me oh, ask let me just, oh, 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 oh. Let me uh, just uh, Amanda, <laughs> before before we go there, there's also the social concern. It's not a new thing, but there are new terminologies which I would have learned lately. Where and as, as I said, it's not a new thing, that's a new connotation to the same thing. Because of how males are socialized, right? To be, you know, I am on top, I am, you know the boss in this relationship, I have all the fans and so forth. And we are not socialized to work together and you know foster a working relationship together as one, growing into eventually a marriage and so forth. We are late in the game where that is concerned a lot of families. When a young man seems to be, how to put it, very close to a significant other or wife, and she seems to have somewhat more to say. It uh, seems way because okay, this person he might be as socially um out there as she is, and she is the one who is in love with social media and is always posting everything and so forth. He is seen as naturally as a sin. I'm sure we hear that terminology time and time again. Now, as of late, you know, a man who seems to be um less of than a man in the public, the wife or the significant other is seen as the dominant person. He is a sin for, you know, just being laid back and not as assertive, mm. right? So there's also that negative connotation where men are now saying to themselves, and they have been saying this for time and time again, that I don't want to be seen as a weak sin, so I'm going to be aggressive forward and so forth. Okay, so based on what you all were saying, right? Is it that when a man is so jealous that he becomes controlling? Now we understand that jealousy, you know, if it's love or insecure, if it's based on love or insecurity, it's situational, right? So is it then that is he con being controlling because he's insecure of the situation? Or is it that he's requesting respect from his woman based on the situation? All right. Um, if you're in a healthy relationship, then the whole word controlling would not be in that relationship. Uh, because Point. you should not have to um, demand respect from your significant other. You should be able to verbalize that I'm feeling this way. And either party, whether it's the male or the female, make adjustments once it's in reason um, based on how the person is feeling, right? Um, so that's one thing. Um, Caleb touched on a very crucial point that the reality is a lot of males and even in our Caribbean context um, have never been taught how to verbalize their feelings and emotions, yeah? Um, so... Anything in terms of emotions and feelings is seen as weak and uh, um, effeminate, right? Um, so even for men to go in anything, counseling, these type of things, they don't know about that. Yeah, it's only now 
that type of narrative is being pushed right now. So sometimes um, that level of quote unquote control, and we must understand socialization. Eh? Because if I see that's how um, the men in my family deal with situations over and over, and this is what it looks like that a man mm -hmm. should do to, to um, get the female's attention or something like that, I'm going to do that. So if I don't know how to properly articulate it, it may come across as being con controlling that one aspect. And then there's the other aspect where it's just insecurity. So no matter what, this guy just wants to be controlling. So there are the various um, parts to it, and we have to deal with each situation to me in its context. Um, so I would say from my experience, from my observation, a lot of times, more so it's from insecurity, right? And it's young men who are now having their first relationships, they're growing into themselves, so they're learning to express themselves and it's from insecurity. They are unsure of their stance and then they are forcefully putting themselves out there to get their voices heard and less from respect because they are getting the respect, but it's from an insecure place that they are, they are at. And they are looking to express themselves wrongfully. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we'll head over to the ladies. So um, let, let me just repeat um, to, to, the, to the woman, the men expressed that women deal with jealousy by being annoying and throwing temper tantrums. I, I, I just, just want- to say annoying, but nagging. Nagging, and I want, yeah. I, I want to kind of give uh, an idea of what they meant by temper, temper tantrum. So they said uh, women are become passive aggressive. They give the silent treatment. Um, Amanda, can you remember anything else? This, all of this fell under the temper tantrum. <laughs> um, I, I think, that, that's that, well, more, those two, those two yeah. really. Oh no, they in the in the temper tantrum also, they go into investigative, um, yeah. mode, modes, right, oh. <laughs> right. So let's see how the female okay, stick on it. Off. Carlene, what are you? What are Carlene you? Carlene is smiling. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that because of, and I'm speaking from my experience here, right? Where communication in a relationship is an issue, that basically leads to what the, what the polls may have, I would like to say rightfully said about women um, throwing the, the temper tantrums. And what was the other, what was the other point? Nagging. They, they are nagging. nagging. They are nagging. And I believe strongly it's because of lack of communication that causes mistrust. And when female asks questions, Sometimes guys find it's it's too much. We are very detail oriented, so uh, and a, a response from you may allow for another question <laughs> to be asked. Then it's too much. They they zone out, like you know, can can this be over already? Why am I being interrogated? And. So women, it comes across as though you are on some shadiness. <laughs> so we tend to then act accordingly. And if it is you aren't communicating, I have been guilty of the silent treatment, right? I, I am guilty of the silent treatment. I will go silent for a few days until you decide you would like to have this conversation. Or right. Pardon? <laughs> Pardon, Dominic? Uh, just Dominic, I, I feel like you're being biased because I didn't hear you ask Nedra for an altar call 
when the guys were talk when we were talking about the guys and their control. <laughs> so I would just like to say that the polls is, is possibly true. However, um, it's an action that really brings a reaction. And that's in my instance, and I can only speak on my behalf and my experience. Excellent. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I remembered sometime one of my friends that I was dating, he said, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. And he said something. He said, and um, she's alpha female. So hmm. now, at that time, I didn't research anything about any alpha female. And uh, to tell you the truth, I'm a researcher. You ask me to research somebody for you that you're interested in, surely, in a short time, you'll get lots of information so that you wouldn't get into trouble then. So when he's alpha female, I started to research. If you see a girl researching like Penelope from Criminal Line, and I go like, wow. So the, how does he see me? Cute? Um, in a sand, so Pascal, Disney World kind of personality. Does he make a person world personality? So I started to get really quiet, and uh, I started to just kind of like withdraw because in my mind I'm going like I don't, I don't think I need to be an alpha female. All I need to be is a woman. God and I pray and thank you, Jesus. I just need to walk in the anointing of God, bless her and all that. But it did affect me. So when he saw me some days after, he said, um, so because I told him, my friend asked for female, you're blocking my calls and you're not answering. And I said, it's not that to know. You kind of affected who I am as an individual. And he said, natural, you know, you're real, real good with the emotional intelligence. You didn't have to go down the road to withdrawing and feeling sad and feeling disgusted. So all those are part of my new turn. It would go to bad jealousy, the disgust and the resentment. I wasn't feeling any way resent. I wasn't feeling resentment, but I was feeling as though as, come on, why did you say she's an alpha female? And why did you compare my female with hers? You know, so when women get jealous or insecure, or feel a sense of their self-esteem being affected, we do strange things. Now, researching is not bad, but it's how we deal with it. Because if we withdraw, and we withdraw for weeks, and we're not answering somebody's call that really care about us, that means that we are actually embracing the spirit of jealousy. And like I said, from the book of Corinthians, I cannot handle that spirit at all. Yes, it is normal and natural, but it becomes abnormal when it becomes wild and mismanaged and going crazy and you're running with your hair in the wind and you want to buff people and you don't want to live a coming overcomer's life. So I just will say we just need to be careful how we see things. And as men, get to the presence of God, get in the presence of God and ask God to help us because some of the statements those guys make out there, it's not damaging, you know. I mean, the bad ones will make real bad statements, but they are good guys that just make statements that we need to understand that it, they're not coming from a destructive place. Like the guys that we're having this interview with, they're cool, real handsome, sweet. So, you know, blessings, guys. <laughs> All right, thanks for that, Nedra. Sabian, what do you have to say about that? I had so many things come into my mind with when this was thrown, thrown out. So as it come, I will speak, right? And I know you and had a like, while fit of soaking. <laughs> yeah, like, I was just listening to these dudes and stuff and being like, oh, take them in now. Like, they have an explanation for, you know, why they get so controlling with you know, jealousy and stuff like that. But anyways, um, from my personal experience, right, I will honestly say that once upon a time, I was indeed a extremely jealous individual. Um, here's why I will say that. I had this spoiled way about me where I must get what I want, when I want it, how I want it, without being asked why. But as I continued in relationships and realized that 
it was toxic, as you will say, you know, in a relationship. I now have this way about me that I, I won't say I don't I am not jealous, but I control my jealousy. Let me explain. What's that? I just said amen. Continue. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me let me explain, right? Um, with the example that Caleb gave with the social media. Um, I am, I would say that I'm a social media person, right? I don't have an issue with, you know, posting things and sharing things once it's nothing too personal. But with the um, pictures and stuff like that, happy moments, I don't mind. My significant other, however, is the total opposite of that. And when I say total, <laughs> total opposite of it. Now, when he, okay, he, he, he sees it, social media as being an uh, opening to create, um, what does it, to allow people to enter into the relationship, which will stream eventually to jealousy. Now, for me, I don't see it as that because I am not creating any um, situation or putting you in any situation from that's what that is what was looking like to me to, to make you jealous. But for him, he sees it as okay, you're not an ugly individual, bless God for that. You are a friendly Amen. person, so people will want to communicate with you. And let's be real, you're your you are, you are active, you know, with young people and, you know, mingling and stuff like that. So you will, you know, meet people and stuff like that. And also something that we need to also pay attention to. And most females are not aware of it. Uh, unconsciously, you know, um, something called your sex appeal. You may not be, how to say it? Um, you may not be aware of it, but it does exist. You would think that you're just being quite normal in a situation and not flirting and stuff like that, but just because how you carry about yourself, how you speak, how you dress, stuff like that can trigger this jealousy thing, right? So with that situation with Caleb, I agreed there, yes, to an extent, right? My next point, um, you all mentioned with women dealing with jealousy, given silent treatment and stuff like that. I agree. I'm not going to even sugarcoat it. Yes, we give silent treatment. Yes, we throw tantrums. Yes, we open our mouths, right? Because we believe that when our volumes are higher, our points <laughs> come across. Let's, 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 let's be real, right? But unfortunately, that doesn't solve the problem, right? Okay. It's, um, I'm seeing Colleen saying we answer back to. <laughs> what was that? We answer back to. Yeah, and yes, and we also answer back. Yes, we also an answer back, especially if you have a significant other that you know to yourself is not going to retaliate with your tantrum. It's not going to retaliate with, um, say, a silent treatment. It's not going to retaliate when you raise your voice. Let's, you know, let's be um, read about it. So, yeah, we do, we do um, do these things. There was something else that slipped me with in, um, in terms of the jealousy with women. Be investigative. Right. No. <laughs> Lack of knowledge creates fear. So when you do not I love, know, wait, wait, say that again, Savi. I need to write that. Lack one. of knowledge creates fear. A lack of knowledge creates fear. Wonderful. Yeah. When you do not know, you are going to be fearful of what may happen. When you do know, is either you prepare for it or you don't. So, with the investigative, you know, way about a uh, woman, it's just, you know. Pastor, you know, you said, okay, are we going to move forward? Are we going to, you know, dress back? How are we going to deal with this situation? Because if, for me, I'm a 
I am a very expressive individual where emotions are concerned. It's that I know before and then come to you rather than it hit, um, you give it to me on the spot because I do not know how I'm going to react it. So let me prepare and then come to you with my most humble side and let's deal with it, you know, one on one. But given me on the spot, if you come and, you know, I see a situation where I find that you're a little too touchy, um, touchy with an individual. You never, you never introduce me to this individual. You never inform me of this individual being a friend, a family, ex, whatever the case may be. In my head, I'm going to say, you know what? <laughs> oh, there's a problem here. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to deal with the situation on the spot. If I had previous knowledge of this situ, I would have said, okay, he informed me that this is a friend. Savvy, don't overthink it. It's a friend. When we go in private quarters, we'll discuss this. If it's an ex, then okay, this is an ex. Just monitor, you know, what's going on. If you see anything that may be, you know, crossing the borders, you just, you know, you're supposed to know your body language, your looks and stuff like that. If it's a family, well, then okay, cool. But as I said, lack of knowledge creates fear. Lack of knowledge creates anger. Lack of knowledge creates emotions that we may not have control over. Thank you so much, Savi. You know, um, I appreciate the honesty from the ladies because when I when I when I sent out the questions, the question to my male friends and I got the responses I laughed Amanda and I <laughs> we, we killed ourselves laughing because we knew it was true there was no lie there was there was absolutely no lie and I like the fact that Savi said um, um, lack of knowledge creates fear I I was thinking about why do women investigate? And the point, that point that you are making there, the lack of knowledge, the lack of communication, that is what brings fear because the man doesn't want to hear the, the, the many, the thousand questions and a woman has a thousand questions. We have follow-up questions from 2012 when we had a discussion about it and you didn't, <laughs> you didn't give me satisfaction. It will come back up in 2021, right? Um, so I think... Thank you. Uh, thank you for the, the, the honesty. Amanda wanted to ask a question. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Colleen, oh, Colleen, sorry. Colleen has been enthusiastic for some while. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to add a point quickly before Carol had concluded. Um, Dominic had made a point and I am just going to speak on behalf of women. You may mention that men are hunters. I'd have you know that women are by nature investigators. When we ask men questions, it's one out of two things. We already know the answer and we are waiting for you to come out with the truth. Mm -hmm. Or because you, you aren't communicating the, as Savi said, lack of knowledge um, brings what? Mistrust? Fear. Um, fear. fear. Great and fear. fear. Mm -hmm. And when you do not provide us with the detailed information, if we do not know it, trust and believe, we will investigate. That's right. And we will find. Mm -hmm. I, and I, we are doing so this. I just mean, it's that men are hunters and women are investigators. Yes, and we are doing this for their safety and our sanity. I just want to <laughs> add that. Nedra, that song's controlling. Could, could you please um, try to... <laughs> Like that, that's not very controlling. I'm concerned. No, that's that? not controlling. That's not what, controlling. What, what's that? No, but what, hold on. Um, this lack of knowledge creates fear, right? Um, okay. Yes, we may have little or no knowledge of the situation, but then, what? 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 Is, is it really that? we are fearful because we don't have any knowledge or is it really that we are just creating assumptions in our head before we even get to the point of 
Amanda, I could answer Amanda, that question. Amanda, Amanda, Can Amanda. I answer that <laughs> question? What are you doing if you're on the same side with us? Listen to this. No, it's got no, nothing no, to do no, with being on the same side. side. This is, this is I want to answer Let's the know. question. This has proven I that most that of the time, time when a woman assumes or makes assumptions that we are correct. No, but before that, Savion, the question that, that, that um, Amanda is asking is if we already formulate an opinion or whatever in our mind that this is what it is right and then you say well we have and then we investigate so i'm careful so i need no, to investigate. For, me, right. for me and the answer to that is yes yes we have no 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 we have yes we have, are investigating we, have, we are investigating we, but we, we need also to, a scenario in yeah. our mind we have said okay scenario Cleon, is, Cleon is my boyfriend one. And I see him talking to Amanda. So he and Amanda probably in something. That is the scenario we create in our mind. And then we proceed to, all right, let me, up, let me observe for a little two minutes. And then as either we take the phone, we ask him for password. We want to ask a whole set of questions. And then we get into it. But we have created a, a scenario, a narrative in our mind that <laughs> we believe... <laughs> <laughs> it is so maybe so and yeah, but we, might, we might be correct that it is so Caroline, however no, we, we, we have a sixth sense women have we investigate even though we investigate we need also to know that all this investigation could affect us mentally. What we need to do is, I, go, according to one of my friends, take it to the Lord in prayer. Agreed. Let the Lord do some revelation and of which he will do. And make sure at all times, because I am really fascinated by guys, um, Christian men of God, blood-washed men who are so open and direct and so real. I call them the realest. I mean... They are hottest and they are realists. I love to be around men that they, they're so real that they don't have to hide and you don't have to hide. So I think we must reach a point where we want to be uncertified investigators. If we don't want to be uncertified investigators, we need to get into asking God to send us men. And I know all of the ladies here that I have analyzed from your personality, do not little personality psychology. Y'all are attracted to men who are real. Your facilities tell me that. So we need to, as women, ask God to send realist men, realist Christian men, so that we won't have to be always going on the computer and going, okay, so who is Sandy? Who is Gaitri? Who is Arjuna? Who are... So that's Arjuna. Okay, girl. You know, we need to reach the point where we ask God to send us men of class. So that we will not always be investigative. The wrong men would lead us into the spirit of investigation. I and I totally agree with you, Nadra. I would just share an experience. I, I sure. told my ex, I told my ex, you don't have to tell me nothing because God will reveal it. Right? So if you yeah. don't want to say from up front, you know, you're talking to Sandra, and I <laughs> feel like you're talking to Sandra. And I bruise my knees about you talking to Sandra. Oh, God yeah. will mm -hmm. I don't have I don't of need course. you to tell me that you're talking to Sandra, right? Well, that's <laughs> tough that you just said you make up in your mind. And then when you come at the man like that now in his mind, listen, I don't have, why do I need to answer these kind of for this, for the same for the same reason that you all want to say, don't post that picture because okay we, we like and you like you're getting too much likes or too much people commenting on that picture for the what? same you put for the same, in the same category yes it is for the, in the same category because just as you said dominic men and women deal with uh jealousy in different two different people. ways so for a man it will it will come across as them being assertive you all didn't want to use the word control so, so it will come across being assertive etc and for women, they create scenarios in their mind. Is it healthy? I, I don't, I don't think that it is, right? <laughs> but that is that is what happens. We are being real yes. in this conversation. So you're saying, you're saying, Carolyn, that the woman wants um, reassurance. Yes. So, so the, just the, just as Carolyn said, if a yes, woman asks you a question, 
and you are you are beating around the bush to answer the question. You are putting reason of doubt in her mind, and then Correct. the investigation starts from the time you say from the time you don't want to answer. Well, we could not have an investigation every two days. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, but that's a different, that's a whole different. And, and, and as you say that, Dominic, then it speaks to your level of trust. And I will always say, if I don't trust you, I am not mm -hmm. going to be in a relationship with you. Because there's Very no way that I can feel safe if I, I, if I have to investigate every single move you make. I am I, I am done. I am out. The end. <laughs> the end. So we, we need to move on to the next question. Um, mm -hmm. which is finally, what <laughs> can be done to prevent jealousy from becoming toxic now in relationships? Because we are we dealt with the toxic parts. We have agreed that women uh nagging, become nagging and they throw tantrums and we well, the men didn't want to agree that it was controlling um, <laughs> pussy, you know. Um, wh so what can we do now to control it, control jealousy from becoming to that point where it becomes toxic? I believe what could be done to prevent it is getting to know the person, becoming friends first and seeing them in all different situations. Because I'll give a personal example, right? People used to ask me, well, I did a um, long distance for, for um, a big period of time, right? Let's say four years, but I mean, it wasn't four years, we never saw each other. I would have gone off for different things like that. But basically we were long distance, right? And people ask me, oh, you could do that. I mean, people in the same country, in the same district areas, you and people just have trust issues. How someone thousands of miles away, how, like, how could you do that? And the only way I could answer is because that was my friend before. I could not, personally, I'm not saying that nobody can do this, but I couldn't start a relationship being, being um, overseas or, you know, distant. Like, I couldn't personally do that because I need to have a certain level of trust in someone before I could say, all right, that is my significant other. And I would have seen them in all kind of different scenarios when they're sad, when they cry probably video call them and they, and they wake up to see how they, you know, all, all these different situations, right? That, that now, obviously, you can't cover everything. So, the, so, so there may be certain things that may surprise you later on, but there wouldn't be any major things that may cause you to totally doubt the character of the person. So I believe to present it, to prevent it before, I think becoming friends is integral. It is, it is very, very integral. Knowing the person... Well, much that you know you could trust them in the situation as a friend first as a person and then when you reach to this level of love of you actually love this person then you can actually almost because i wouldn't say nobody's perfect so you can almost put your hand on a block for certain situations because you know how that person would deal with it and how you know so it was so to me i wouldn't say it was a breeze obviously they were hard times right but it was easy because Ashley was my friend. Healthy relation dynamics for me. And stop thinking that a relationship is based on what you see on TV. Because a lot of people um, embrace the TV concept, the movie concept, the music concept now. And they live their relationship based on the scenes that they see on, in these movies. Some of these scenes are quite um, far-fetched, very unhealthy, and as someone who's into playwriting, does not make spiritual sense. So you take that and you put it into your, your real-life relationship, and then you realize, what is this going on? Why am I replicating and modeling what I saw? This is not even handled jealousy. This is not a way to handle insecurities. And so you live a life based on what you see on a TV screen. And it hurts at the end because it's not spiritually based. It's not faith based. It's not um, pure relationship, healthy relationship based. 
and you feel sad at the end, you realize, well, why is this relationship causing me depression instead of joy? And it's all because of not being able to see something that is real from what is unrealistic. Um, I will say firstly, um, you as an individual have to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you have experienced um any level of mistrust in a relationship, um, you need to heal from that first because it doesn't matter if you have a good relationship or one that is similar to your past, you're gonna carry that baggage with you. That's so right. We gotta get um accustomed to being well, I coined this word singularly whole before we look now to join ourselves with anyone else. Yeah? So that's yeah. the first thing that's important. Um, why? Because also uh, you could continue that cycle of uh, bad relationships if you are um, if you don't really heal yourself from um, that previous thing. Then when you come into a relationship, now be intentional. Both parties need to be intentional about safeguarding their relationship. Yeah. yeah. Um, so not doing anything um, really um, intentionally to invoke that type of feeling on the other party. Sometimes we have a tendency because I want you to feel jealous, I will in, in mm. order to get back at you and stuff like that. Those are seeds yeah. that should not be planted in a relationship because while you may um, use it for a means to cause now, it will come back to be a fruit and haunt you later on. And then also, um, Carly, in touch on it, communicate communicate. I know sometimes they say, well, men don't like to communicate, but if we're talking long-standing relationships here, both parties need to learn how to effectively communicate with each other and um, have an open space where the other individual is free to say, I don't like how that made me feel um, without mm -hmm. um, any sort of um, um, negative connotation behind it and you all work through it um, to see whether it's rational or not. And I'll sum all of that up to say that person needs to be emotionally intelligent. Yeah? Um, because relationships are really for whole and grown folks. And if you're not emotionally oh. intelligent, you're going to mess that thing up. I have a quick question, Dominic. Um, you spoke about um, healing first, right? And I want to ask, how does an individual know that they are totally healed before they can step into another relationship? That's, that's one part of it. And two, um, if it says I think I've given myself some time and I feel as though I'm healed and I, and I feel as though I can venture in a relationship and I get certain triggers that takes me back to a place 10 years ago, is it that I'm not healed? Um, well, if they just come in, I'll try to bring it down in two minutes. Um, so... A doctor don't go and diagnose his own self, nor does a someone, you could be a teacher and going to get a new degree, and you don't just go and say, well, hey, I walk in and give me a degree. We have to get comfortable with seeking therapy. Yeah, um, I'm an advocate for that. Get counseling. Yeah, um, so most of the times we have maladaptive thoughts in our mind and someone with a maladaptive thought pattern um, cannot really say to their own self, I am better. Allow someone to take you through that journey and work it through. Um, most of the times, one of the key markers of healing is that the wound is no longer there. So just as you say, if you go into a relationship and something triggers you like that to take you back to that place, it, it, you never heal, you're suppressed. Yeah. Um, so your ability now to interact with that person, to see that person, and you don't want to grab them by the throat anymore, they ain't taking you back to that place. It's one of the key markers that you have truly found healing, yeah? And that type of intervention, um, I'm not saying that persons can do it alone in their spiritual journey, but it, I will advocate getting a, a somebody else, a professional, to help you through that process, especially if it's trauma. And being Thank you for that very comprehensive answer. <laughs> and being honest with yourself, I want to add as well, because some some, some, because some, of you might say, yeah, man, I over it. And as he said, you see, suppression could lead to almost making you feel that you are really over it, you know, but the right situation come about in the right time on the right night when somebody gets you back the right way, it will come back like if it was just happening yesterday, right? So, so being honest with yourself, not because you didn't struggle and mean you're over it, but you thought about it, but you just didn't do it means that, you know, it's, 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 it's so triggering.
I totally loved this discussion this afternoon. And, and I really appreciate the fact that you all agreed to be a part of this healthy conversation about jealousy in relationships. Um, some takeaway points before we, we close. Um, just recapping, Cleon indicated friendship. You should be friends first. Um, Domin no, Nedra said, stop thinking that relationships are based on TV, right? Dominic said, heal from part past relationships. Dominic said, both parties need to also be intentional about their relationships and you need to communicate. And I just want to end with this quote from Dominic, that relationships are for grown folks. So if you're not grown, you have, you have no business being in a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Amanda, I will, I will hand over to you now. Okay, so I, I would also like to say that I really did enjoy this conversation as well. I hope you all enjoyed it as well, being part of this initiative that we have started here. We'd like to also thank you all for accepting our invitation to be here. And um, just to close off, you know, we always have to show support, show some love to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our Instagram page as well, yes. right? <laughs> so look out for us. Once you see opinion loading, just click, 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 <laughs> right? Like and share. Like and share.